Hello and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. I want to begin this video by talking a bit about the materialist focus on many modern spiritual thinkers and what I think about it, as Joe Vitale is one of those thinkers. I, myself, am a person that has not figured out the money game yet. And honestly, having to work 40 hours every week, paying off debt, and worrying about bills is not a hindrance to living a spiritually rich life. But it is making it more difficult, and takes away a lot of time and energy that I wish that I could spend elsewhere. But as long as things are what they are, the best approach is to work on accepting them, while striving to change one's circumstances. Thus, I believe that there is merit to people who, through what they teach, try to help people reach financial freedom. Especially since there are so many people with malevolent intent that have more or less unlimited financial resources, it is important that those of us that are on the side of God and freedom don't get stuck in the rat race forever if we can help it. I'm not sure that I'm in favor of the luxurious lifestyle that Vitali lives, but neither do I condemn it. Personally, I don't want to live in comfort and luxury, but if I'm being honest with myself, I don't want financial struggles either. With that being said, zero, as presented by Joe Vitali, is not merely a numerical placeholder or an absence. Rather, it is a profound idea that invites us to reconsider our understanding of the self, our desires, and the limitations we place upon ourselves. Vitali suggests that zero represents a state of pure potentiality, a blank canvas upon which we can paint our desires, aspirations, and intentions. To grasp the psychology of zero, we must first acknowledge that our minds are constantly occupied with thoughts, desires, and fears. These mental constructs often limit our potential by creating barriers and inhibiting personal growth. Joe Vitale's concept of zero encourages us to clear our mental clutter and embrace a state of emptiness, where the ego takes a back seat, allowing the true self to emerge. In essence, zero symbolizes the emptying of our minds from the incessant chatter and self-doubt, creating space for new possibilities to emerge. This process closely aligns with the principles of mindfulness and meditation, where one seeks to silence the noise of the mind to connect with the deeper aspects of the self. Let's just take a step back and think about this for a moment. The vast majority of us have this incessant chatter in our minds. It is most of the time just old records that play over and over again, and it's often not helpful at all. Intelligence and education have nothing to do with it. Now, think of just how much the input from this chatter affects your behavior and general decision making, and how much this chatter is just a consequence of past programming, whether it is through experiences, our particular processing of these experiences, messages from our culture, from the mass media, friends, family, etc. We, furthermore, usually go through basically the same routine, day after day, week after week. Could this really be the state of mind that we are doomed to live out our lives from? Imagine a state where we are totally free to do as we truly please with the chatter of the mind. Or even stop the chatter completely. What possibilities would open up? Why not keep this question in your memory and come back to it from time to time? By embracing the concept of zero, we can begin to recognize that our limitations are often self-imposed. We create these limitations through our beliefs, fears, and past experiences. Zero invites us to let go of these self-imposed boundaries and recognize the boundless potential within ourselves. When we free ourselves from the constraints of our own making, we open the door to a world of limitless possibilities. This newfound sense of freedom allows us to pursue our dreams and desires with greater enthusiasm and confidence. One of the central themes in Joe Vitale's concept of zero is the idea of transcending the ego. The ego, in psychological terms, represents our self-identity, which is shaped by our experiences, beliefs, and social conditioning. Often, the ego can be a source of inner conflict and resistance to change. By embracing the state of zero, we can distance ourselves from the ego's limitations. This detachment from our ego-driven desires and fears enables us to see our true potential and purpose more clearly. We become less driven by external validation and more aligned with our inner calling. Incorporating Joe Vitale's concept of zero into our lives requires a deliberate shift in our mindset. It involves setting clear intentions and aligning our actions with these intentions. 
when we start from a state of zero, our intentions become more authentic and aligned with our true desires. Setting intentions from a place of zero allows us to focus our energy on what truly matters to us. It helps us avoid being swayed by societal pressures, superficial desires, or the need for external validation. Instead, we can channel our energy into endeavors that are personally meaningful and fulfilling. Surrender is a fundamental aspect of Joe Vitale's concept of zero. It involves relinquishing control and trusting the natural flow of life. Surrender does not imply passivity but rather a willingness to let go of the need to control every aspect of our lives. When we surrender to the state of zero, we acknowledge that there is a greater intelligence at play in the universe. We trust that by letting go and allowing things to unfold naturally, we can tap into the vast reservoir of potential that exists within and around us. Many of you may be familiar with the law of attraction, which posits that like attracts like. Now, I'm not convinced that the law of attraction works the way that most people think that it does, or that, understood properly, law of attraction would even be a good name for it. I'll probably make a video on this in the future, as I think that there are some. Joe Vitale's concept of zero aligns closely with this idea, and Vitale is incorporating law of attraction into his teachings. On the other hand, to act from a place where one's actions are not defined by the past, or expectations of the future, is something that goes way beyond general LOA teachings into much higher realms. According to Vitaly, when we operate from a state of zero, our thoughts and intentions become pure and unencumbered by doubt or negativity. In this state, according to Vitaly, we become powerful magnets for the experiences and opportunities that resonate with our true desires. The law of attraction becomes more effective when we are in harmony with our inner selves and the will of God. Now, this I find interesting, which is why I've decided to dwell on it a little further. There is an immense difference between just wishing to gratify one's ego, and to truly seek the things in life that we believe will align us best with God's will, which is the same as what is most authentic within ourselves. Finally, now that we have explored the psychological aspects of Joe Vitale's concept of zero, let's discuss how we can apply it in our daily lives. First, cultivate mindfulness through meditation and awareness exercises to quiet the mind and connect with your true self. This, together with meditation, needs to be a solid foundation in our spiritual awakening. It's difficult to get anywhere if we cannot be present with what is going on in the present moment. With mindfulness, you will both become more aware of your inner workings, have an easier time to gain access to solutions to problems, you will be more observant of possibilities, and able to see dangers in a calm manner as they arise, rather than constantly be on guard. Just to name a few things. Next, clear mental clutter, regularly examine your thoughts and beliefs. Let go of those that no longer serve you and create space for new possibilities. In this, be vigilant towards the mind's tendency to want to go back to what is familiar. Furthermore, we need to set goals and intentions, and do so from a place of authenticity and alignment with our true desires. Then, practice surrender by letting go of the need to control every aspect of your life. Trust in the process and allow things to unfold naturally, while you take conscious action. Just doing for the sake of doing has to go. But so does sitting on the sofa and manifest. Neither of these things work. Finally, recognize that your potential is boundless. Release self-imposed limitations and embrace the idea that anything is possible. What this means is something that each of us has to find out for ourselves. I still have tons of limitations. That is part of the reason why I'm making videos such as this one. To find out more about what limitations I'm unconsciously carrying around, that I have no real reason for, and which I haven't put under any serious scrutiny. That's all for today. If you liked the video, hit the like button, as this helps the video to get noticed. Also, feel free to share it on social media and other places. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you always get notified of new videos. I post content every day, and I do my best to always offer something valuable. Also, check out the description and comment section for more things that me and my wife are doing. Thank you for your time.